And we're in. Football season's here. It is. It's here, dude. I walked in and Dan was doing a fantasy football draft. I feel like fantasy football isn't like as hot as it used to be. I don't. I don't think it is. I still do it because I feel obligated to to keep up with some relationships and friends. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you got the friend group. Do you do the? Only, I've never done it. Um, the in-person draft seems fun. I've done one in-person draft, but 99.9% of them have been just yeah, online. Me, mine were online, but the in-person seems fun, right? You go to a fucking Hooters. You're just slamming wings. You're talking shit. We did it at a brewery. I yeah, you're doing yeah. some trades or something. Yeah, it's it, it makes it fun, but it's like also like I just want to like not have it take up my whole day. No, it's like a five-hour deal. It's nice now that they have all on the, on the apps on the phone now where it's just like you just sit and watch TV and do it. Because yeah. like at the end of the day, like... I think with the dra- like with drafting for fantasy, it's like whoever the fuck is the best projected at the, at the uh, yeah yeah whatever's left like probably odds are it's your best bet yeah yeah you're not just go with the AI. GM and a real team. There's a couple like sleepers yeah every year, but like if you want to like be consistent every year and you just gotta get avoid injuries and just take whoever's the best available. You gotta you gotta know how to do positional drafting though. You can't like draft yeah. positions out of order. Right. I think that's the most important part of yeah, it. Yeah, what what position get the most amount of points, even potentially based on your league's rules? I think that's where most of the knowledge comes from. But as far as like the players themselves, I think it's overhyped to like do the deep dive. I do enjoy it. I haven't done it in years, but I used to religiously do it. I do enjoy it because it does add a whole layer to your viewing experience on Sundays. Oh yeah, and then and then I do kind of enjoy the deep dive. I think because uh, not because I think it excels my chances of winning, although I th- it helps a little bit, obviously. But, it can, yeah. But I I enjoy the deep dive because again, you're more invested in the season, and that's what I miss about sports: the stories, the the college, the oh, this guy's quarterback played with him in junior high. They love each other, you know, like the, all these little things that like play into winning a championship at a professional level. That's a lot of fun because it makes, again, watching on Sunday a lot more fun. I remember when fucking uh, Red Zone came out. Dude, yeah. I don't know. I was well, it used to be free. Now you got to pay for it, so I don't obviously don't partake yeah, in it Yeah, I don't anymore. either. I'm cheap. But in, like, t- probably 99 or some shit, like, I was in fifth. It was a, it was a mind melter. Melt it, dude. <laughs> like, just, it was just watching highlight reels all day. <laughs> it was the most fun thing I've ever done. In, like, in real there's time. so many touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> It was almost too much. We weren't ready for that. We weren't like uh, groomed for that kind of like quick content yet at that no, time. No, I think that fucked us now into TikTok. It That's did. first year TikTok. It was. Yeah, but it was li- live highlights. That's never been done. It's still never been replicated. That's insane. It's like uh, Thanos like snapped his fingers and said like, just yeah. the end of all attention span. Yeah, let's take out all b- <laughs> all boring shit in life. Just done. If we could do never that recovered. with powerlifting meets or weightlifting meets. I think now we're on to something. So you would need enough competitors to have multiple meets going on each weekend. And you're literally just flying around to third attempts, world records, or a head-to-head, I got to hit this snatch to beat Dean type of thing. Now I'm fucking watching lifting. You're welcome for that, whoever wants to carry that into (laughs) fruition. I think that's it. Yeah. Because lifting, you know it, right? Like, yeah, you want to watch, you know, the grandma hit her, you know... 50 pound snatch and you want to watch the new guy get better and how excited he is Mm -hmm. when he pulled his first 400 pounds that's cool and that's what makes the sport special in person but that definitely doesn't make it cool for the viewer unless you're that kid's mom it's kind of like uh what crossfit does with their cbs contract or whatever you know they have like there's literally a week of competition but they televise like one workout or strongman yeah Yeah, they televise like the exactly yeah strongman's been doing that forever they televise one workout though for the crossfit yeah. games or whatever so it's like everybody's like it's just like co- this compact condensed version and it looks super intense but they didn't see like the f- you know it's 15 workouts they didn't see the other 14 others that maybe were a little bit lackluster or not as entertaining to watch but yeah it well, all comes down to the finals and everybody's watching everybody's all fired up because it's not a full podcast without me talking some shit on crossfit <laughs> uh i feel like the thing strongman has done and obviously it's at the roots of the sport is to make it spectator friendly and entertaining, right? You grab a football player, you grab a bodybuilder, and you grab a powerlifter, and they all go push a truck. Who does it best? Mm-hmm. It's like early days MMA, right? That's what made UFC obviously evolved to such an insane sport, and it's still fun to watch for me. But in the early days, right, who's better, a Muay Thai or a wrestler? And you just let them brawl. CrossFit has no boundaries in what the quote unquote sport is, right? 
they threw a fucking baseball one year, right? Like, there's no boundaries in which you could do this thing. So how do we not tailor it more to – it should be the most viewer-friendly. And like you said, there's some workouts that are like 45 minutes long. They're doing a triathlon. And I understand that that is a great test of a certain fitness and energy system within these athletes. And that's what these CrossFit programmers are doing. Mm -hmm. So from like a scientific who's the fittest guy, yes, it makes a ton of sense. But from a pure dollar sign, which I wake up and see dollar signs, baby, (laughs) we have to program shit. Like, Like this year was actually pretty decent. Yeah, like, it was. Like the, they had a heavy snatch deal. They had a, a heavy uh, sandbag deal. They had a deadlift uh, yoke walk, right? Like all that. It's pretty visually uh, friendly. They kind of, the front, they front loaded all that crazy shit you're talking about yeah. in like the first two, three days of competition. Yeah, they were running and swimming. They and front loaded all that shit, got it out of the way early, and then did all the visually pleasing stuff and the more like strength focused stuff in the second half of the week, yeah. which I think is. Uh, was it's pretty different compared to like a Castro method. This yeah. was uh um Adrian Bosman's uh first programmed games and it was uh It seems pretty it, well it received, seemed, right? I think that on paper people were like, Oh, this is fucked. And then it happened and everybody was like, Oh shit. I enjoyed that. Yeah, because I, I, I uh I follow it. You probably follow it closer than me still, but I, f- I watch when it's going and I, I follow a bunch of the athletes and I try to follow the stories. I didn't see and there's always insane critique after the games and, and shit and drama and I didn't see that much this year. I think people really uh people I think people liked it. Yeah. Also like not a lot of people got hurt. Yeah. Um <laughs> something there. Yeah, for you know. sure. Uh but then again, yeah, I think it was just different. I think it was uh, – I inter- I actually enjoyed the sandbag thing. I thought, yeah. like th- – I guess the first half of that was kind of boring because they were all just kind of picking them up pretty easily. But then right. once it got down to, like, that, you know, that final stretch – What was of, the final chick's weight? I was trying to tell a member today. 250? 250. And final dude's weight, 350? 350. Because we have a 250 in the gym, and that's the heaviest I've ever thrown around. But I would love to throw around like a fucking 400 pound bang. Well, apparently all the men, so you know, CrossFit inside scoop here. <laughs> apparently all the men in the back room, like before they, like when they were warming up to go out and do the event, were like struggling with the 260. Like one or two guys in the back could like, have you lift ever, the 260 have you ever in the warm up. one? No, not like that. Not it's heavy. hard. Well, I think we have a 150 and a 250. The biggest one I had messed with was like a, a 90 pounds. Yeah. And that was more for like a cardiovascular workout. You start to throw, dude, it, it moves weird. Same with a keg uh, loaded with sand or water. They just move so weird. It's yeah. so awkward. But that's like something that I think I can do. 350? And yeah, a crowd was, like that? Oh, I, dude, I might adrenaline. deadlift 900 pounds. I mean, you're talking like, what, 30, 40,000 people oh, in, in an arena? Dumb. It was deafening. You know, it was so I went to Caffeine Kilos and fucking fucked around, pulled 700. That's right. And there's a thousand people there. That was lit. Yeah. I remember that. That was inside, too, in the gymnasium. You guys so are coming wow. up, right? Before we get into the topic, might as well plug away. Yeah, October 1st. Caffeine Kilos invite. I strongman, think... pull only. Uh, oh, yeah, strongman. Real strongman. Real strongman. Untamed Strength, presented by Untamed Strength. Shout out Alan Thrall. That would be lit. All right, Thrall. we'll go. Yeah, you guys should come by. No, obviously. we'll definitely come it's by. It's going to be in Elk Grove, 15, 20 minute drive. Yeah. Spectator fee? Not for not for the fam. No, no, no. For the 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 audio fam. Oh, I don't I don't know honestly. All right. If anything, there's probably a baby a spectator fee. Maybe but like five dollars. Yeah, something. there you go. A bunch of different I'm events. Not sure. Probably um, still to this day, um, one of the coolest events I've been to. I've been multiple. Uh, you guys, I missed the one under the freeway here. I wish that was still going on. Obviously, Sacramento. That one was cool. Bit. Well, now we one. can't because people live there. Yeah, <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, oh, that's fair. They have to live there's there. no. There's not even any bats there anymore. They got rid of the bats. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. because of the construction. So. I honestly, when it was underneath the freeway, like we thought people would like have a little bit of backlash, but it looked so sick, especially with the GoPro footage because we illegally had my buddy Kyle like go up with the drone through the gap of the oh, freeway. That's sick. And then it's the cars, and he went down, and it was just this fucking circus of people. Yeah, that's. Dope. It was such a sick shot. Yeah, that's dope. I was like, oh shit. And so it's one day event. Yeah, one day. Four four different sports basically. Yeah, CrossFit team CrossFit, uh, deadlift only. A uh, strongman comp and a weightlifting, yeah. all going on at the same time. That'd be sick. We can also throw out for our uh, friends at uh, Game Day Barbell. Their meet in USAPL meet is the fifteenth and sixteenth of October, Austin, Texas. I think they just announced some prizes and throwing out some money. Texas is a little deeper, but who knows who's listening? Some Texas boys and girls. Yeah, yeah, probably. Game Day, no, that's a gym. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you guys were just there or something? Or they, they were came here. here. They were here. They were here. That's right. Yeah, we had a little expo in the Bay Area that went really well. It was a lot of fun. And then they drove up. They're helping us run our big meet in February. Yeah. Um, What's the name of the February meet? You guys have a name yet? Third Street Barbell Open Classic one, Reunion. Two? Yeah. O- o- open. <laughs> yeah. Open one. Now it's going to be full full powerlifting meet. Full powerlifting, full powerlifting meet. meet. SBD. SBD. Squat bench dead. Natty's only. Sorry. I, so I can't complete. Yeah. No no, uh, no juicers. Our juicer meet maybe later that year. But uh, yeah, I think we're going we're gonna to try to do it big. I'll, I'll let you know off air. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to try to do it, do it. So that yeah. should be fun. That's obviously still six, eight months away, but I think we're launching that to sign up for everyone September 1st, which is um, this Friday. So you should be able to sign up for that on the USAPL.com website. And, uh, yeah, let's go kick it at, at, at Kevin and Kilo's Invitational. Invitational? Invitational. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Because what? Weightlifting's invite only? Yeah, some, yeah. Some yeah. CrossFit stuff's invite. So there, there's the weightlifting's loaded with invite. And yeah. uh, open. Both. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah, uh, we want to do like a big paid powerlifting eventually, and that's probably how you do it, right? You do a Sunday like invite elite day, and then you do a Saturday party day. Anyone that wants to smash weights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about our boy Neve. Neve, I think, is the first. Maybe not, because I just have a bad memory. But everyone always asks, like, have you met celebrities or hung out with celebrities or whatever? I think Neve's the first celebrity I saw in the wild. Oh yeah, I was with you. It was at, uh, and it was it was like the pseudo wild because we were at um, uh, Tribeca. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, so like we're at a film festival, so I don't know if that considers the wild to see like a TV guy at a film festival. Uh, yeah. I would say no. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting it because I, I knew Tribeca is like a big thing, but I yeah. didn't know it was a big thing. And so we were out there for a premiere, and I think I saw him on the street though, but it was in the Tribeca area. Yeah, and people don't understand that like it's not just one theater. It's like it's distributed across a bunch of theaters. So the chances that you're necessarily going to see somebody yeah. who's in other part of the it's like like uh like what's the one in uh, Cannes? Yeah, it's the yeah. same. Where idea. you just like walk around. And it's like a downtown. What's the one that's in Aspen or in, in the um, mountains? The big one, Sundance. 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 That's what more I meant. I think more Sundance. Like Sundance, where there's just like theaters everywhere and people are. Celebrities are just out and about. So that's the other thing with Tribeca I didn't know. That was the, I, I should go to a film festival. Can you just go to Sundance? Are you allowed to just go? Yeah. Uh, yeah I would love it, to go to Sundance. It's not cheap, but yeah, you can. I'll find a way. Um, I didn't know that was the first experience of that at all. And yeah, we're just like in an AMC or whatever the yeah. fuck. You know, you're, you're just, just in, a in a theater. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they rent it out, obviously. Right. And, and press is there and all that is cool. But it was cool. It was Yeah, that was a fun experience. But I saw Neve stomping around. He had like popcorn. Like he might have been going to go see Adventures for all I know. He might not have <laughs> been there. He was probably just catfishing somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, he's at his own premiere alone. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> that movie, dude, we were talking about it off air a little bit. The original documentary, I think it's called Catfish. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. It was so good. I haven't seen it. I've only seen I've seen a ton of the show. Yeah. Never saw the actual like thing that sparked the whole show. Cuz I don't know if the I think the show's more popular than that. Cuz it really did like create the word, right? Or was the word a thing? I, I have think no the, idea where the And word what does that have from. to do? Is catfish where you shove your hand down a hole and you don't know what bites you? No, Is no, that that's, the joke? That's noodling. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, but you're ki- you're noodling for catfish, hillbilly, yes. hillbilly hand fishing. You're, you're noodling for catfish, but noodling is the act of the. So what if I got catfished mm-hmm. because I'm talking to a beautiful woman? But the beautiful woman online is actually you. Mm-hmm. Are you then a noodler? <laughs> and I got catfished. <laughs> I think they call it. I think the catfish reference is because it's like a maybe because it's a bottom feeder. You can't. They never come to the surface. They're ugly. You never see them. So you know that kind of thing. Aren't they kind of ugly? Don't they look? That's like that's a little uh, that's rude. a little mean. Sorry, sorry, folks. <laughs> sorry for anyone out there listening that does catfish for a career. So uh, <laughs> you, well, you can't you say know, that in 2022. Are, you can't call people ugly. When was the last time you saw a model on the other end of a catfish scam? <laughs> I pray every day. I just answer every ugly ass DM, <laughs> praying it's fucking You're Jennifer Lopez. Model? Yeah, that's Jennifer Lopez fucking with me. Just the opposite happens. I'm talking to the ugliest, dating the ugliest person online, and it's actually just a dime piece. This is J Lo. Yeah, just because she just wants to know what it feels like to be a normal person. Yeah, she's like, "Is my dude? This is good. Is my personality good enough yeah. to get a man while I'm ugly as fuck?" That's, that's a what, test. That's what these ultra elites do because of boredom. Yeah, yeah, that's what really hot people do in their <laughs> spare time. Yeah. Yeah. So, according to Wikipedia, the term catfish was actually developed 
because of the movie. Oh. Yeah, but what, wonder, a, what a pioneer. Yeah. It must be the Neve guy then. He yeah. must have invented it, right? The myth is that cod were shipped with catfish in the same tanks to keep the cod active, ensuring the quality of the cod, whereas when shipped alone, the cod would become pale and lethargic. This myth originated in the fiction writing of Henry Nevison in 1913. Uh, and Charles Marriott in 1913, The Catfish. Other than that, it just is naive. Um, interesting. Damn, that who, is interesting. Who writes catfish fiction? <laughs> I don't know. Just fucking... I don't know. Pond <laughs> porn? Catfish fiction lure. It's <laughs> amazing. That is amazing. Pond porn. <laughs> Pond porn. That's some hillbilly shit. Oh, dude. my I like God. It. Pond porn. Oh, my God. So uh, today we're reviewing... What, what's the movie called? Uh... Actually, it's we're going to take a, untold. Take a oh. quick, quick break. We're not reviewing shit. Quick break right now. And while you were gone, I hope you went to 3sb.co and got your hoodies because they're the best hoodies I've ever made. And the, you're going to be new favorite hoodie. It's, hey, it's fall. It's fall, baby. Coming it's up. 111 right, degree fall, baby. Yeah. Falling right down on us. <laughs> when does fall technically start? The uh, uh, the uh, song, dude. Uh, when, when is the Earth, Wind, and Fire? September. When Earth, Wind, and Fire. My mom's September. a diehard Earth, Wind, and Fire I love fan. Earth, Wind, and Fire. I think they're fire, too, but yeah. my mom's like loves them. That era also Earth and Wind, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude, that new outfit of yours is Earth. <laughs> it is. That shit is, that shit is windy. Earth stuff. <laughs> Bro, those shorts are windy. Dirty Earth. Um, What is it? September 22nd. 22nd. The 22nd of September. September Earth, Wind, and Fire. September 22nd. Yeah, the fall. The autumn equinox. Autumn equinox. That's when we... uh. Yeah, pray to our or something, our gods. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dance yeah. around a pole. So this this show that we're talking about, untold the untold series on uh, Netflix. They're the best. How many right? un, how many untolds have we done? We've done one for sure. We did Malice Jenner. in the Palace. Oh, was Jenner? Yeah. Untolds are really good. Yeah, they do a really good job yeah. of putting them together very professional. The yeah. new ones coming out, I think this Tuesday is the one about the NBA ref. That went to jail. Oh, oh the yeah, Kings yeah. Guy. The Kings guy. Yeah, yeah we yeah. would do that too. We I mean, it's so one. unrelated to fitness. It's, who gives a shit? It's so funny though because then the and one ones out. Have you watched the and one so one yet? Good. I fell asleep watching it last night because I tried to watch. Like, it's I was good. like, man, I might as well try and watch this. Yeah, it's and good. And I got halfway through it and fell asleep. I'm, I'm gonna it, finish it. Obviously, I'm just tied to those. Like to and one is like. Well, to me as an outsider that didn't like live the hoop, live like the dream, hoop dreams. You know the hoop <laughs> dreams. Like I love playing basketball and like mess around on the streets, but like. With your buddies, but I wasn't like all in on like shit. I didn't even know really what An One was. Oh, you guys I, didn't watch the mixtapes? I mean, like we watched that shit, but like I didn't realize it was deeper than that. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize the layers to it, like the shoot, like the them trying to get into the NBA with the shoe stuff yeah. and all that. Like I didn't know about any of that. I didn't know the business side of it, but I knew the culture side of it huge. Like Rucker Park, I knew all the like all the guys we followed. And the shout video games. Yeah, th I didn't play the video games as much. Um, shout out my boy Yui, who was my shooting guard. Um, all, th all through high school, we played together uh, three years. He was great above me, and we both played varsity early. One of the best shooters and players I've ever played with. And uh, Yui was Japanese, um, but his dad was from England, so he had this cultural mix about him. And he, me, him and I were about it. Like, the, the, my, my coach, sh shout out, one of my best mentors, one of the best ever, but he's, like, kind of old school. You know, we're playing fucking defense. We're, we're gritty. We're getting after it. And then me and Yui come along, and we're fucking trying to throw spice on everything we do, you know? And but well, like he's handing me the mixtape, and I feel like kids, like, sharing shit, you know? I'm watching the DVDs. We're working on moves together. Like, it was, yeah, I was so about it. The part about that little one, I think that's most relative to, like, what we, like, do on our, you know, outside of uh, the gym, like, with the brand stuff, right? Because yeah. they talk about how that brand was inceptionalized at that dinner table. Yeah. With the ideas for the branding and, like, how to start a brand. Like, how do we source shirts? It yep. was kind of cool that that perspective, you know, and and that I'm trying to justify not totally derailing the podcast with mentioning the and one. Yeah, because yeah. I no, mean, it's, it is good. I got excited. You fucked it up. <laughs> we can just cover that. No, but the know. branding of it uh, or the story is really cool too. Where and one went to like the people. It was the brand of the people. Yeah, it where, was. Where yeah. Nike was like the brand of everybody. They yeah. they went to the heart and they said that I think it, there's a line in there that's really good. They said like, yeah, we 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 have we're the heart of basketball because they're talking to the people that play on the blacktop, the kids that want to be something that or, or or even the guys that are 30 now that never made it to the league but love basketball more than anyone else. Uh, and that's kind of like what I think you guys do well, talking about branding and stuff. Like, you guys are for the lifters. Like, you're about the lifters. You can name all the lifters. You're friends with all the lifters. You're not about 
you know, yeah, the soccer moms that go and, and, and get a pump and, and, and like to cross. Well, that's because, but that's because we're coaches in the gym. Too. Right. You right. Know? So like, that's the hand. Yeah, you hand, walk the right? walk. It's all the, it's like all the connected and body of the, of the whole thing. Um, but yeah, Untold does a really good job. It's ESPN. Untold is my favorite thing Netflix does. It's ESPN with Netflix. though Netflix. with Netflix. Ne- I think it's just Netflix. I, oh. I could be wrong, but I think it's straight up Netflix. You might be yeah. right. So it's their thirty thirty because thirty thirties and whatever are really good. Those today. are good, but these are fucking. I good. think Untold's good. Like I have not seen a bad one. And and like the topics they choose, I feel like are because it's easy to do like the biggest thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's easy to do. They kind of niche down like the real life Tony Soprano. Yeah, like I feel that like one with the I, hockey one. Yeah, I feel like they do like the B stories where everyone fucking knows, but you don't. You haven't thought about it in a while. Like the Manti Teo thing, I remember being so big. Yeah, but like I haven't thought about Manti Teo even though he's in the league and. You know what I mean? Or, or even N one. I haven't thought about N one and I wore all their sneakers. I watched all their tapes. I haven't thought about them in ten years. Does but vintage, it was so prevalent. Does vintage N one go for big bucks I, online? Dude, of course I'm fucking on grailed that night <laughs> trying to hunt down some tees. The issue is, I think, and they said it in the, the video too, or in the documentary, they're like, We make tees that people play in. So like it's hard to find these vintage because they're probably all ripped up or sweaty or they're like up, thrown yeah. away. Um sneakers are probably hard. I had those too. The Tai Chi's, dude. Tai Chi's changed the game. The shoe? Yeah. Isn't that what broke? What's his name's ankle? That's what broke the ankle. Did you? You probably fell asleep. They talk about that. Yeah. The yeah. Marbury? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Marbury. Marbury? Yeah, his first game. There's a really good 30 30 on him, too. All right. Back to da- <laughs> dating people you don't know. Yeah. So this one's called The Girlfriend Who Didn't Exist. Untold. So Colin. The Girlfriend Who Didn't Exist. And yeah, it's one of those like deep memory things. Like, I remember this happening, but like, I didn't, wasn't. Wasn't top of hasn't been top of mind for a long time. He hasn't played in a minute. Really, I thought he was still in the league. No, oh. not Wik- according to Wikipedia. He was uh, his contract ended in January of last year. Oh, so yeah. So he did some time yeah. in the league. Though. No, no, no. Yeah, like he's my age. He's our age. Yeah, yeah. So he's played a long time. I think he's thirty three. Yeah. Oh, so he had a good run. No, especially yeah. for that position. No, for sure. And he's undersized a little bit. He Where looked did good. He finish his career in New Orleans. I think it was New Orleans was yeah. a lot of his career. But yeah, I don't think he was a you know pro pro baller, but he, he was good. He started. Yeah, he had an outstanding senior year for um, the Fighting Irish. Yeah, he was motivated by this you know this 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 chaotic scenario. Everyone dying. Of everyone dying. <laughs> hey, what if this? Hold on. This is just like you know conspiracy theory going yeah. on around right now what if this whole thing was just, just a mirage that notre dame created and this is the ba- this to is re-brand. the backup story it could be you mean to like get relevant again yeah what if the whole thing like they actually did fabricate the girlfriend and had him do all this shit and then this yeah, documentary is like they planted all this evidence the documentary is like actually like just helping their story yeah it is <laughs> it is, and I mean, they're, they they went to the, that's the, got to be the last uh, national title they played for, right? Yeah, no they, have, they, they haven't been so. great since then. Yeah, no. I, I don't under. Here's this thing I don't understand: Notre Dame. Why are why are there so many fans who have no connection? Catholic. The ca- the is Catholic that, is that it? No, that's one hundred percent. Okay. The, the Midwest, the Midwest, you cheer for Notre Dame because it is the Midwest. The Rudy story, the Catholicism, and then um, and then you cheer for your home team. So my dad, yeah, my dad was a huge Notre Dame fan. Notre Dame's the only college football games I've ever been to. We drove up to UW to watch them. Oh, drove down to Stanford to watch them, and then the Buckeyes. I'm not even Catholic, but it, there's something about it that draws me nah, to it, the, dude. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of sick. It's good. Like, the name they're kind of underdoggy always the name's cool too because you think about this like an uh, irish you think about like an old yeah, yeah. I, all the, the immigrants the so irish all. thing too everybody yeah. that i know that's like really proud of being irish yeah. they root for they vote for notre dame yeah i don't claim it as much but i'm probably like 15 percent irish or something my grandma I'm right around there too yeah everyone's like something right <laughs> yeah my grandma i'm currently 11 but it changes every few months thank yeah. you ancestry.com yeah they, they, the the one need to do mine yeah i, I want to do mine too my my one my dad's mom uh, her family is somewhere in Ireland, and so that's a big thing. They all obviously immigrated to like the Midwest-ish, right? The yeah. the the, the Pens, the Pennsylvanias, Illinois, and shit. And so I think that plays a huge role in Notre Dame, and and it is one of the older universities. It's just like USC. Like USC's got mega fans all over the nation. I under, understand that one more. Really? I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't I get don't that know. one at all. Like just a private random school. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Reggie, I don't know. Reggie just, Bush. Yeah, sports. Yeah, 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 like in our generation. Yeah, but it's the same thing why I'm a Bulls fan. Like I, I grew up in the 90s loving basketball and Jordan was the best. When, you know, when when we were younger, USC was like on top. Yeah, yeah. So it was very that was easy. this era. Yeah, it was very yeah. easy to be a fan. Yeah. 
And no. he and he almost went to to SC. Like yeah. that story is what kind of threw me off because you didn't know that part. No, because uh, it felt fake almost. It felt a hindsight story. It's not the only thing that felt fake. No, here. the whole thing was fake. But that one was like supposedly this real story of talking to like his uncle type character, his coach or whatever, right? Yeah. That felt um, like a hindsight story. Uh, yeah, maybe so. Because then he's crying at the thing. He's like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But then I'm gonna go. Why are you crying? Like, no way you believe God really told you that. I mean, maybe he does. Maybe I'm, I'm being <laughs> that, a dick. These, no, this guy's. I mean, these. Uh, that is. But I thought it was more of a dad pressure thing because you could see at the press conference. I don't know. There's like they showed one clip at the press conference. Mm-hmm. He's at a whole, which I thought was weird too. He's at like a, a Hawaiian like only announcement. Yeah. Where normally I think you do like the best players or your high school announcing where you're going. And then his dad looks like totally normal, like kind of cool and with it. There's some weird dynamics there that they didn't dig into that much. Hawaiian only. There was. <laughs> Scholarship. It was. It yeah. might have been. No, it said like Pacific Islander oh, you're right. scholarships yeah, yeah. But, but or something. Why? I don't know. That's and weird. obviously you're in Hawaii, but like I'm not going to the Oh, Cali- that was in Hawaii. Yeah. It yeah. was. But, forgot, I forgot he was there. But it was like that Pacific Islander sense. only. It wasn't like Hawaiian as a, as a, as a state. Got it, it was as like a people. Got it. Um, which I've never I forgot seen. that's where they were originally. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it was just weird rather than, yeah, you do your high school or all the top 10 in the area go mm-hmm. and do it. Um, but there's a weird dynamic with his dad's kind of like over his shoulder, and he's fine. The kid's like crying saying, I'm going to Notre Dame. I think that the dads did not come off well for either of the people involved in this. They seemed a little too involved with what was going on with their... Yeah with their kids and i get it they're young like he was probably 17 yeah yeah for, yeah for sure they really front loaded the the religion thing in in this like the first half hour of the first episode yeah w- w- like was just dripping with mormonism which i think is uh i think it's an important part because i when i brought this up catholicism to like, no well uh, no they, he was mormon. he was mormon who which, was mormon uh, teo teo was he yeah which yeah. was weird too right because like not that they're I both, miss that. Yeah, they're both like pretty conservative on the. Did you fall asleep in that part. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't mention it a ton. They definitely mentioned religion a lot. I just, but, I think I just like the. Well, I heard the Catholic thing once, he, and I just thought that it was the whole town. He didn't say Mormon. Yeah. He said, uh, "Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints." Yeah, LDS. I just, I guess they, I just a bunch that. of times. They don't really say Mormon. I don't think, but it's like one time in the whole thing does anybody yeah. use the word Mormon? But same, same deal. Uh. Which is already a whole nother weird side note. Like, yeah, both are kind of on the conservative side of Christianity, but they're not, like, the same, and they're not best friends always. Yeah. Um, But I think that plays a huge role when I was talking casually with the boys, Kyle and Dan, and shit about this. They're like, dude, how could he get catfish one idiot, all this and that? I'm like, I I actually, and I think this movie does a good job of, like, making you empathize, because one, the era, right, like, it's not like you're FaceTiming all day, every day. It's not a thing. There's probably Zoom, but it's very difficult and weird. No one's Zooming. I didn't Zoom in 2009. Yeah. And then two... I don't think anybody did. Yeah. This kid is an island kid, and now he's on the mainland, and I've never been to Bend or wherever the fuck we are, Indiana, mm-hmm. uh, but I've been to the Midwest, and no way does he feel comfortable moving there. Right. He already feels like an outlier. He doesn't want to be there by him crying at his announcement. Yeah. There's all these factors that he's feeling so isolated. And then he finds someone on the internet that is religious like him, loves football like him, and is from like the same culture as him. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it ties in really well to want to confide in someone like that. Like I, I empathize with that so much. Um, so I think that's why they pushed hard in the beginning to realize like the state of mind he might be in to... Like even calling her a girlfriend is weird. I thought, <laughs> obviously, but that is weird. Yeah, because yeah. like, yeah, if you've never met somebody in person, they are not your girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever. Yeah, I, feel I like don't know. That, it, I feel like that's super common, though. So I was gonna say in 2022, but even dude, two, no, 2009, I had friends like that had like MySpace girlfriends, dude. I did. Oh, you were macking? I wasn't. But <laughs> I I I remember friends that had girls that yeah that were like considered boyfriend girlfriend and they had these like online relationships i remember that my on myspace and this is yeah. like facebook era yeah even. same era no yeah uh i feel like face Not, it's like it wasn't like all my friends but like i no, mean no, probably no. like a handful i'm saying this era i think is very myspacey though well because i think they met on myspace so they show a myspace clip 
I don't yeah, think it was and then Facebook. it kind of like early Facebook because I think Facebook and Twitter they were on Twitter early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was because he was a football player though. That's a little bit more more of like a celebrity getting the baseline of the audience on yeah. Twitter because like basically Twitter's essentially for celebrities. Yeah, it does feel that way. I'm gonna amend my my previous statement and say that someone that you've not met in person that you also have not seen. Yeah. In 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 a Live way that you yeah in the way that you would know that that the voice. And the text and all that are coming out of the same person. I don't know. I mean, sort of. It's it's kind of like a um, like, like Cyrano de Bergerac if if Cyrano didn't actually exist. <laughs> you know, I you know? just I just don't get. I just don't understand how the person that was being uh, imitated, the woman, didn't see. Or no one like said, "Hey, like your picture's being used talking to this super famous football uh, player yeah. on Twitter." That's even happened to like, me. Like, how is that? Like, no one ever mentioned to the real girl, like, "Hey, this person's using your profile pictures to talk to this famous football player, and all the threads are on Twitter yeah. for everyone to see." No, and he's got how many thousands and thousands of yeah. followers, probably because he was so famous at that time. No one noticed that. That would have been an interesting. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, especially when Manti Teo's the like hot shit on ESPN like he's on Sports Center every night every night like yeah. he was like his name was being the thrown, Heisman yeah his name was being thrown around a ton just for football let alone the scandal that's what made the scandal so big in the era like he was actually smashing heads and then this happened you yeah, know what I mean he was like what he was a Heisman candidate yeah no yeah anybody that's a Heisman candidate yeah. has got 100,000 followers yeah. on Twitter and like you said USC's like the hot shit and Notre Dame's coming out of nowhere yeah it was a big deal it was a huge deal I just don't understand how that got I never that thought about happened. that because that's even happened to me where people like screenshot someone using my pictures on like Tinder and fucking Utah you know what I mean like hey are you in Utah right now like this dude's name's John and he's using your picture I'm like no that's obviously not me <laughs> you know what I mean they'll send me screenshots of the app exactly yeah. so it's like how did that get missed yeah I, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting to me because that's a that would feel like that would happen pretty easily. Yeah, but then I guess even so, like if you're that chick, what do you do? So say someone does tell you, "Hey, are you dating Manti Teo?" and you're like, "No." Okay, someone thinks you're dating Manti Teo. What do you do? Call ESPN? Like you know what I mean? Like what's your what's your plan of action? I don't think she could approve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking call TMZ, I guess. But then how do you do that? You know, like I don't know what I would do either. Um, it would have been a really interesting wrinkle to the documentary if they would have talked to the real chick. And how did they not get her to? Do I don't know. It? I guess maybe she's she not so even irrelevant. Relevant. Yeah, maybe she's dead. They, they had her on know? camera, but that was it. Yeah. Um, and you saw like other pictures of her that were not ones that were used. The but. fact that the catfisher got the girl to take that one photo. Yeah. How does that? Because she knew her. I yeah. was no. She her. she hit her. No, she hit her up, or yeah. the guy hit her up at the time he was man, hit her yeah. up, and was. Um, said, "Hey, my friend's really sick. Can oh. you send this picture yeah, to yeah. him? I think yeah. he thinks you're pretty or something. Yeah. Make him really feel good." And then she sent that picture. See, like even that makes and me everybody think... wants to feel like it needed or famous sure. or important. Yeah. So it's like, of course I'll send that. Yeah. No, that's a nice thing to do. It's a nice gesture. It's so, like that kind of stuff when he did uh, get a little investi- investigative and he said, you know, show me the date in your face right, and right. whatever symbol or whatever, you know, like. Then it is believable, right? Then you get that photo, and you're like, "Fuck, okay." Yeah, it's got to be. I guess she's on the who run. The I guess she's on the run now. Yeah, who's going to the lengths to, you know, like it's pretty <laughs> believable. Yeah, we're, we're we're skipping a major part in um, that. Yeah, yeah, I did in that. that uh, uh, things got complicated for the um, for the guy who was pretending to be the girl who was supposedly Mante Teo's yeah. girlfriend online. And decided to kill this character off. Yeah, <laughs> that's and, like the big thing. <laughs> like, and that I mean, that's what, yeah. And then, and then he comes out and says something that I don't know that I would have in that moment. My grandmother died. Okay, that's fine. Oh yeah, but my girlfriend, my girlfriend died. Right. Like that was that really runs along the line of is this calculated, right? Or is it, or think, is it that he that he's just so you know innocent i think that, that's what it, is. That it just I rolls think he was out of just his mouth so innocent and, and protected yeah. and just he was just his whole reality it was like football practice staying healthy yeah. working out not really socializing going out getting partying getting drunk it's like he's meeting people online his religion is very important like he's yeah. just like feel like he was just in this really 
narrow hall of like interact human interaction and i think when you're at that level and he seems like a pretty genuine dude but you have to be skeptical when you go from like hawaiian pretty good football player small island mm-hmm. you know everyone's uncle aunt and cousin and now you're in notre dame like like you said like one of the most famous universities despite not winning games mm-hmm. uh and now you're winning games like you're like the hot shit you're probably not trusting anyone around you I think everything is a perfect storm for him to fall in deep, insane trust and confide in this human. Because like Dean said, you're you're on the bus all day, you're traveling all day, your football practice, your class, and all you're doing is texting this one person. You yeah. know what I mean? That he has got, and, and then everything else is probably a bubble. It's probably his mom, his dad, and then this this chick. And so he doesn't trust anyone or anything. And then to announce it, I thought was weird too. Like, damn, you're on ESPN live interview, and you're just gonna talk about your girl dying, but. If you get shut, such shocking news, you're definitely in, in, you know you're 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 not in the right mindset to think about what you're about to say, Maybe. which I thought was a dumb interview on ESPN's part. Uh, it, yeah, like I a think rude the, one. Th- I think the oh, me- it's totally fucked the up. media mishandled this story from jump. Yeah, from jump, it was all sensationalized from the first thing. But I do have to ask a very important question. You're a, a good-looking, well-known athlete. Uh, and a program that is is um, achieving things that it has not had has has not been able to achieve in a long time, and you ain't fucking. I, I think I think he's honestly about his religion. Yeah, I think yeah. I think when you can just tell by the way he talks about religion yeah. that that those they that's not even a thought. And and despite how it's like I can't I can't disrespect God yeah. or all that. It's like I, I just think need he's to in. follow the. No, that God, these are temp- these are temptations from the devil, kind of shit. Yeah, no, I think he's right, and even even post this, just chaos. tons of wet dreams. Okay, but I'm gonna, but just just for a mo- yeah, maybe <laughs> just Irish dreaming, just, baby. Just, just just for a moment. Okay, so <laughs> poor panties. <laughs> So, the, all of Notre Dame probably fucked. The football team's the la- expenses on the dude, panties dude, alone. The laundry bill in the yeah. dorms for Notre Dame. Dude, that poor equipment quarters. manager on fucking Fighting Irish. <laughs> just like, oh, jays again. Yeah. <laughs> the USC teams at the Playboy Mansion just fucking models. <laughs> and the poor uh, Fighting Irish just all, <laughs> all clogged up. Just, no wonder they lost. You can't find a working laundry uh, machine there. Dude, yeah, just, if they weren't crawling the Fighting Irish, they'd be called the Blue Balls. Yeah. The blue port, yeah. <laughs> The fighting blue. <laughs> the fighting blue. That sucks. Oh, uh, there's a whole color change. Anyway, uh, okay. So, but we're talking about the about the media not being responsible. Yeah, for yeah. No, this it thing. was reckless. And here's a, here's a real quick on that. The yeah. real quick thing with that is like, and meanwhile, the real scumbag, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Johnny Manziel. Hey, is yeah. hey, God, God's hey, gift, God's yeah. gift to hey. Earth. I got a special spot in my heart. Sorry, Jim. Guy. I just like had to. I had to get that out. I didn't want. I got to a special. Spot. That was in my notes too. Yeah, yeah. it was For just Johnny. like it just shows you like, like how we polarize certain people, and the media chooses to, you know, uplift who they want. For I, sure. I think that, I think the I'm media- a Manziel guy. I think he's. I think he was great. But it's I like- just get a lot of uh, references that we look alike. And then also like a lot, and then also the Browns drafted him, so he's got a little spot in my heart, despite his cocaine addiction. Well, it's like he's out here doing all this crazy shit. No one talks about that. Yeah. It gets ignored. No one. He's the Heisman winner. No, you know? he's like, balling out. Or he's going to be the Heisman winner. You yeah. Know? And then meanwhile, you got this sweet innocent guy. That's not. That's not a good story. Yeah. Let's well, hopefully he has some dirt on him, so then we can just shit on him. Yeah. Poor guy. I do feel really bad for uh, Manti. Uh, Unrelated but related, uh, the thing about you looking like uh, Johnny Menzel or, or or vice versa. Yeah, there, there's a study that's just come out that um, the people who have somebody that looks they look like but they're not related to, they actually have similar genetics, but not in the hereditary DNA way, in the expressive way, like you know the way that your genes are expressed and the way that you look. They look like alike because uh nature doesn't really have that much to work with yeah yeah yeah, there's only so many options yeah yeah uh they're i don't know i mean not really cloning but maybe we've got i mean maybe battlestar galactica was right maybe you know maybe (laughs) cloning the remnants of a of a old cloned uh colony yeah you can only put legos together a certain amount of ways yeah it's interesting that's 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 big that's the big brain stuff yeah yeah, not anyway. this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that a a a thing that probably came from the media was the okay. Well, is he just covering up for being gay? 
Oh. It, and then, like, uh, yeah. yeah. That's just a default, I feel like. But it's also, like, so that would never fucking happen nowadays. No, no. Because they, yeah. they're also making it seem like it was a bad thing to be gay, it felt right. like, in yeah. a weird way. Like, you're, like, should be, like, you hiding this, like, weird thing about you. They made it seem like the media was. Right. And they, they ask him about it, and he said, oh, far from it. Which gets Audience ba- laughs. Which gets you know. back me back to... And you ain't fucking? Yeah, just jerking like yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, how do you know? Yeah, how do you know? Until you, until because you my wet dick, dreams, you know it's always yeah. gals. Yeah, that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you go based on your wet dreams, but that's got to be a sin. No way a wet dream gets a pass. <laughs> what are your wet dreams, man? <laughs> it's not like there aren't gay Mormons. There <laughs> are gay true. Mormons. That's true. But, yeah. uh, but uh, now, you're right, the... the, the <laughs> The point is, like, why would why would anybody need to know one way or the other? Right. But why would anybody so need to know bizarre. about kind of any of this shit? It was so bizarre. None of it made like, why is this like, how is this such a story? It, it was must very have been, TMZ. We we must have been in such a good place in the United States right. at that time, where like right. this is what the fuck we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, this was main stage we were news. So, we were so safe. Yeah. And like had no worries that yeah. this was the news. Yeah. I know. I, can, I miss it. I guess we were in Afghanistan at that time and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but right? we'd already been there 10 years. But we'd know? already been there. Yeah, for the hot like, shit is. Like, over. there wasn't any threat to our nation at that yeah. time whatsoever. Where, like, there's okay, light. Like, let's, let's just, just shit down this Mormon kid. <laughs> yeah, there's light Bin Laden news, but this dating is way more <laughs> entertaining. <laughs> it was like a soap opera. Yeah, it's getting way more clicks. It's just like crazy. And you got Fox News. Every damn news channel is just like. Yeah. battling it out talking about is he gay <laughs> what yeah. is going yeah. on it is it, it, how crazy that's 12 years ago and it was such a different time it's so crazy dude just a panel a <laughs> panel of people talking about a football player's sexuality yeah insanity yeah, and and again who cares and why exactly yeah. why is why do people think it's important and why do people think that uh any of his private life stuff at all even if like i mean Say say the situation was more innocent with the dead girlfriend, where he thought she was. It was like a real person, and yeah. he thought that she was dead in the moment, and that's what he said. And then it turns out that she was like found under the building or whatever, you know. And was she's that still her alive. excuse, right? Uh, no, it was. Um, I had to disappear. Had yeah, it was like it was like organized <laughs> just, crime. That's when I'm breaking up, right? Yeah, <laughs> like organized crime. That, like I can't hold it together with this story anymore. I think the whole story. It is, is kinda, insane. I think it's kind of hitting me now. After yeah, no, it's an actually insane because she fakes her death and has a friend. <laughs> this uh, this lady is actually insane because like uh, what made me really think besides oh, obviously the the extravagant. Is how extravagant it is. Like she made fake cousins on Facebook. Yeah, and she made herself him. A fake cousin of her, right? To like back up, and he became friends with him. Okay, right? And then they hugged. Yeah, that's fucking weird. You're a stalker. Yeah, at, I know. That, at that parking lot thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, the... I've got tears. <laughs> yeah, <crying. laughs> Dean lost with. <laughs> I've lost control. <laughs> no, it's fucking insane. I've lost control. No, it's insane. <laughs> the wet dreams took over his life, Dude. and he he hugged his girlfriend, who wasn't his cousin. Yeah, that's now we went from Mormon Catholic cat catfish to some hillbilly shit. Now you're fucking your girlfriend's cousin. And then the fact that he, I remember there's like a quick little segment where he was talking about how he was telling uh, uh, Teo like certain plays that they're going to run. Yeah. Yeah. As the girlfriend. straight coaching. Okay. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's where it all falls apart. No, that's amazing. She she hacks the radio and is calling him plays <laughs> mid game because oh, she a, actually QB wants to be an slant. NFL coach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Watch the linebackers oh, rush. Oh, thanks, babe. <laughs> Not that they. Not that she did make it seem that way, like she's some she fucking super savant on it. Yeah, like, she, like yeah, I actually told him. that. Yeah, I coached him. Yeah, it's like his oh senior year God. was like like yeah. that because he was listening to. Yeah, me. I, I like, sent him some protein she, in a she, workout program. She was totally like acting like she was coaching him through that senior season. That was funny. They should have uh, built more up on that. Yeah, they just threw it in there real quick, yeah. and you're just like, wait, wait. <laughs> You were an okay high school football player. Now you're coaching Notre Dame fighting Irish from afar. From, tw- from a Twitter, from a catfish account. Twitter DM. <laughs> that is kind of wild. That is crazy. Is it? Isn't that how Historic. all the yeah. top college yeah. programs work? Their yeah. their coaching comes through Twitter DMs. Yeah, from a fucking. It was kid. just a probe from Notre Dame. Yeah, just 19 years old. Because he, like, he would the coach, he, the coaches couldn't couldn't get through to him, yeah. so they set up this probe catfish account. Yeah. Co- your step back's a little him. slow. Your your account's a little slow right now. <laughs> really got his ass. 
Oh, oh my god. That is funny. Oh, that all that laughter and totally wiped out what I was going to say. Oh, bad. Oh, 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 oh. um Coach all right. So we, we 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 have just skipped over a part that hits you on the screen like in the first second of this this documentary that the person who catfished Mante Teo is a dude. Yeah. And but is no longer a dude. It, yes. A trans woman that maybe didn't know what was happening. And I think uh, he described that well in the beginning, right? He yeah. said, like, I don't know what I feel or need, and so I'm reaching out here to be, like, a fake person. Yeah, exactly. He- Again, like, I don't really empathize because you're fucking up someone else's life, right? Like, I don't think that's ever cool when your issues start to fuck with someone else's life, right? Like, that's my that's one of my moral pillars of life yeah whatever fucked up shit i have i never wanted to affect someone else i'm fucked up and i can do anything fucked up over here but when i fuck up someone else now i'm now that's not cool that's just my morals right everyone's morals are different so i think that's but i do empathize in the sense where he described it well you know like i I feel so confused i don't know what's going on so i built this account because i wanted to see if this is who what i am or who i am and i get that at least i get it maybe i don't empathize i get that yeah but it it, it make, you can you can see what happened there. Another conspiracy, yeah, is she just trying to be like the first female Notre Dame head coach? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what it was. Oh man, I I don't know. That's a good question. So what they tell us on the screen is that when they started shooting this thing, they did not know that Ronaya or or now Naya, yeah, is a trans woman. <laughs> they discovered that through the process and like. I feel like maybe a little bit more research, and they would have known that before they got in yeah, there. Yeah, a little Google. And then I read an article about how they decided to start with that story instead of starting with with um, with Manti. Well, it's it's very popular conversation. Yeah. Right that's now. the thing. It's a, it's very it's very hashtag right yeah. now. Yeah, it was uh, definitely. Um, I guess that's probably. But then again, though, it's like they're it's kind of consistent with Untold. Like they've kind of yeah. you know think about like the whole. The whole Jenner one was about yeah that too, you know. Yeah. So I guess it wasn't necessarily out of pocket for them to like kind of like start talking about these important issues in sport. Yeah, you know, this one's not necessarily about sports, but the overlying these like stories. Yeah, like um, even the Malice in the Palace that we did was more about like Ron Artest's mental health than yeah. it was basketball or yeah. a fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's which which is probably why this is good. Yeah, like right because you dig into the human the, the human aspect of sport. Yeah, um, I think that. The there are mitigating factors, um, one of them being the the trans thing. One of them being, as revealed at the end, spoilers that um, uh, this person has moved back to American Samoa, where it is very common for someone to decide that that today they're dressing as a woman and t- tomorrow they're dressing as a man, and 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 the 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 roles, the societal roles there are different than what we're used to yeah Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and so had that been going on entirely there uh i I think we probably would feel differently about it in general however taking an analytical approach to the whole thing we're talking about like cousins and all that stuff it's very predatory it was very predatory toward him and I mean, I guess you can if if you were paying attention to his social media at the time you might get the fact that he is innocent and yeah. gullible and and lonely even that like if he if he doesn't leave hawaii if he goes to uh or whatever or, or actually goes to sc where the milieu is different there's a ton more stuff going on yeah i don't know there's hot there's probably some hot fucking catholic girls in notre dame yeah but like, yeah. what do you do there but, besides college related stuff yeah, you know, yeah no, it's to college go. Town. no it's a college town yeah. nowhere to go yeah I guess it's probably popping there. I don't know. No, it's very college town. But Jim's right. Like USC's in the middle of fucking LA. There's yeah everything under the sun. But I I, I do think I don't even I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's the exact era I grew up in, and I've never been catfished. The rumors are going to start. Like Mike, you empathize with them so much because you're a dumb bitch. We're like, no, I'm not. Uh, but like I I, do, I I don't know if gullible is the right word. I I do think it's a perfect storm to fuck his shit up. You know what I mean? And maybe that makes it even more manipulative on her part. But I don't know if it's because he's so gullible. Like, maybe he was so focused on football that this like one little thing he just didn't really put like too much deep thought into. Yeah. It was just kind of like, oh, at surface level, that's when, what. Remember it is. his own cousin, who's his buddy, knew mm-hmm. her, knew her, 
you know and so like all these little things that add up to like make it feel legit and oh, I, yeah, I know jenny i talked to her yeah and i don't think his cousin ever said and maybe he did and didn't mention the documentary like hey it feels sketch i don't even know if that's her he never said anything like that he just said yeah we've talked a couple times i know her you know what i mean yeah like if, if i'm talking to someone online dean's like yeah yeah i know i know her she's cool I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, no, that that makes it. Way you know what I mean? There's so many like, and legit. then and then again, like maybe I'm overplaying it because I can't relate to like the island life, but just from things I've heard and cultural stuff, like it's so different than moving anywhere, let alone to fucking Bend, Oregon. Like he's just so probably he's more trusting. Maybe mm-hmm. is what I'm thinking, right? Because you know everyone, everyone's family knows everyone. Hawaii is such a small place, and if you've been there for generations, everyone. You know what I mean? So mm. he's just like, yeah, my cousin knows him, and I know his cousin. Oh, yeah, it's cool. The family, like the fake family Bro. members, dude. It was layers. <laughs> That's what's scary. But also, like, what about the pictures though? Did was he constantly just updating like yeah. whatever new pictures she uploaded, she, he would upload? That's and- what's scary to me is how like in depth manipulative it is. Okay, well, so one thing that we haven't talked about at all yet is the voice and the voicemails. Yeah. 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 Those are real, right? Conversation. Shockingly, uh, shockingly feminine. Good. Yeah. Yeah. There's some practice there. The whole <laughs> Dr. Phil thing with the voice. They made oh, yeah. Dr. Phil made him do yeah. the voice. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. had like getting they had like the little screen up and like a couch for him to yeah. lay on to get into character. Yeah. And Dr. Phil like it was the one that cracked the case at it like, okay, yep, this is legit. <laughs> Yeah. Now we got Dr. They Phil involved Inspector in Gadget. this whole thing. Yeah. Dude, the whole thing is just so insane. Uh, yeah. uh, that, that was the moment where I went, what the fuck? That's American culture. Well, then Dr. Phil, who's not even a doctor and, yeah. and by any kind of... He was pro- probably not even Phil. Liter- literally, like... <laughs> what is he? I thought he was like a, a therapist of some nature. No. 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 He's just a host who puts doctor in his name. He has Can no I doctor do that? of any kind. So he's like Dr. Dre? Oh, he, so he was an actual doctor. Oh, okay. I thought he wasn't one. Yeah, I don't know. So I was told You thought it was a Dr. Lying. Dre deal. I thought it was, honestly, yeah. I thought he was just like, <laughs> I heard that it was just made up for the show or whatever. I don't doubt it. Interesting. But apparently not. Doc. Doc Phil solved the case. Doc Phil, though, solved the case with a voice. He had a, an expert come in. It's like fucking Pawn Stars, dude. Yeah, like, it is. I'm gonna call my buddy. He was an expert <laughs> yeah. in voice. Oh, he knows a lot about voice women's analysis. voices. Yeah. No, I, got, I can only go 70 for the voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pawn, Stars, Pawn Stars is making a small like comeback. I think maybe because it's just on Amazon Prime or something. Uh, Everyone's it's watching on, it. Like, it's on Netflix, uh, Maybe too. that's it, yeah. It's on top of Netflix yeah. for some reason. That's like, what's getting, not to side note here, uh-huh. things are getting real confusing with the streaming because like three different streams, now it's cable TV, they all have the same movies. Like you can watch Lord of the Rings on like four streams now. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Because that new show's coming out and they want everybody to, everybody's buying up the rights yeah. for it. It's just so weird. Yeah. I, I, I'm interested to see how this new show goes. Not to totally sidetrack our discussion, but have you guys watched the new Thrones? Just uh, yes. s- just episode one. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't watch last night's. Yeah, I haven't either. I did watch last night's. Yeah, no, I, I read the whole book, one. though. Oh, oh so you did? I read the I read the House of Dragons book. And uh, not to like... It was... Uh, when I say listen to it, I mean I listened to fucking 20 hours of it on audio. Oh, yeah. And it was like written very like biblical. Biblical. Oh, yeah. It was more like... Uh, History style. Interesting. Mm. The book was. There's parts where, like, th- where we're seeing now, where it was more story stuff, but yeah. they like they go even way farther back than the show does, like 200 years before even all this shit. So now, like, where we're at, like, I remember these things happening in it. Yeah. Um. Obviously, they can't. But they like, did throw make- in some stuff, like in the first, like spoiler alert, in the first episode when they talk about like the kings passing down the information of like the big war, mm. like that never happened in the book. That was uh, all made up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They just have to like connect the dots. And then, obviously, if it's written a certain way, they can just change all that for... But I'm liking Obi-Wan. the vibe of it so far, the first episode. I thought That's it was what fine. I liked. That's why we talked about Obi-Wan a little bit, and a lot of people hated it. But, like, Obi-Wan, I the show... I hate that. I thought it was good. I thought the vibe was Star Wars, so I'm in. And so far, this vibe is Game of Thrones, so I'm in. Andor's going to be the, big, the best show they've ever done. You think? That I, shit looks I, insanity, It does dude. look... It, it's all practical. Dude, it looks so fucking good. I mean, relative They spent so much else. money on that. I just that. worry that it won't have some lightsabers and shit, and that's when you miss me. Dude, see, I'm the opposite, man. I lean more towards the shit without it nowadays. Really? I'm not, not that I don't like it, but it's like I really like the deep dive, like rebellion shit. I oh. love that. I hated that movie, um, Rogue One. Yeah, the first couple of times that I watched it, oh. and then I went back to it, and it's like, oh, this is actually good. Yeah, I love Rogue One. Yeah. I actually, it's my got favorite it. movie they've done outside of the, the original. Yeah, and then I watched far. I watched Force Awakens the other day, 
and I had thought it was not bad, and I'd seen it a few times. I think I own a copy of it or whatever it mm-hmm. was on the other day. I'm like, oh my god, this movie's fucking awful. Well, and if you go, like, it's terrible. If, if you watch Rogue One and then watch Force Awakens, it's like watching like an independent film and <laughs> then like, uh, fucking yeah. ultimate blockbuster. Uncharted. It's a little Fast and Furious. Yeah, it's very very fan servicey. And then the second one, the um, uh, Return of the or Last Jedi. Last Jedi. I thought that one was shit when I when I watched it the first couple of times. I watched it the other it's day. The best, best one. And it is yeah, holy of the, shit. Of the new three, it's by holy far the best shit, one. Holy shit! The like there are some things about it that I think are stupid, but the dialogue is better. Oh, it's yeah. great. A million it's times shot better. better. It's just yeah. The, the it, story's thick, deeper. It's yeah. very. It's more it's, multi-layered Star Wars. And it, I really love the anime stuff that they put into it with like the style it's shot and like some of the anime stuff is like very up my alley personally. In the same way, and this is going to be controversial, I think that um, the Netflix Marvel stuff is better than the Disney. No, Marvel a lot. Stuff. I think a lot of people like that. I don't know how. Uh, I, I had not ever watched the Defenders, and I'm currently making oh. my way through it now. It's so fucking much better than fucking Moon Knight. Yeah. Or oh, Deadpool. Deadpool. Deadpool was, was really good. That's, is that? No, Deadpool uh, was uh, Fox. Sony. Yeah. No, so no, Fox, not Deadpool. Whatever. Not Deadpool. Um. Uh, shit, not Deadpool. What's the other one? Not it's, Logan. Uh, Punisher. Oh, oh, Punisher. Punisher, yeah. yeah. Punisher, everyone right? loves that. Yeah. yeah, everyone loves that. I bet he thinks that that one is too extreme for Disney for to bring the. Bring oh, definitely back. not in there. And yeah. Yeah. and the. Um, but Doctor Strange was kind of like riding the. That was kind of yeah, more gory or kind of more yeah aggressive for yeah. Disney. That's what like what made uh Logan when it came out so cool to me. It was like felt so Dude, real. Dude, Logan is fucking sick. Yeah, like just felt like oh that opening it, scene in the parking lot. Yeah, where people like sick. talk about the boys and stuff like oh if superheroes were real and yeah. I like boys the, little I like the boys. Yeah, season two. two sucked ass, but yeah. but like it's edgy, but it's like oh if if a superhero is real, it's like a human, and that's what like Logan felt like. Yeah, no, I really liked that one a lot. They 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 tried to make the characters feel. Like real people, yeah, mm-hmm. and and but by cutting out a shit ton, like you can only really deep dive into the personal thoughts and feelings of so many superhero yeah. characters at one time, and all the X Men shit is just like giant ensemble cast stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. This was like almost like a day in the life. I think yeah. X Men and fin- fin- Logan. Yeah, X Men will be, uh, hopefully make a good comeback. Who knows though? Because now it's Disney. Yeah, and uh, Fantastic Four yeah. is supposed to be. I mean, they haven't done that one right yet. No, it's been pretty bad. But Star Trek Four lost its director to Fantastic Four, so oh, interesting. Yeah, so they don't have. They're still on schedule. But Who's doing the Star Trek? J.J. Abrams. Uh, a- e- EP. That's J.J. Abrams. I saw in the wild. Not Abrams, or is it? Who did? Who did the Star Trek? A- a- it was a- Abrams, Abrams, right? Abrams, yeah, yeah. I saw him in. That's the why wild. they were so good. I like Abrams. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's good for some sci-fi shit. Yeah. Where did you see Abrams? Uh, I think Gold's Venice. But same oh. idea, like it's the wild, but it's not. When you go to Gold's Venice, you're gonna see some shit. That's pretty wild. I'd give that a wild. You walk in there though, and like Fifty Cent could be doing crunches in the corner. Hey, yo, Fifty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Upside down. Yeah. Upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I, made, like, I, made a me- I made a meme about GHDs with that that people like <laughs> were dying about Fifty. Yeah, when yeah. he's upside down. Yeah. Yeah, you should do it. It's like when you're up, so when you're doing a GH, when you're in the middle of the workout on the GHDs or something, and someone changes the music, yeah. it's like and you're upside down pointing. Like, <laughs> yeah, you do that again and say like when your shirt, when your shirt, when you wash it on warm or something, his belly's all hanging out. <laughs> He looks so funny when they did that. I'm like, oh, this is what you guys did. Compared to like me remembering seeing the music video for the first time in eighth grade, I'm like, this is the most thug shit I've ever seen. He's in a lab doing fucking crunches all chiseled. And then now he's all Music frumpy. videos hit different. I know. <laughs> they did. I oh, know. Maybe it's, it's who better. Was, uh, who was super offended? Oh, the game was offended that he wasn't a part of that like halftime show. Oh. He was pretty upset. I mean, I think he could have gotten an he invite, reps, but I don't know if LA he's the guy. so hard. Yeah. But also, like, he just never really did much after that first album. Like, he continuously went downhill with his career. The issue is, is I think he never, um, in my opinion, he never, like, sold out. Like, no, he, he didn't. He, you're right. He never made, like, a pop song. That's why. No, like you're right. Like he's actually like a, a you know like a, a rapper, and he, lyrically he's amazing. And what I, I no lyrically he's very good. I yeah. don't know about the crazy shit he's been saying lately about being like beating Eminem in a rap battle or something. Yeah, that's like, just part of his. But he is in that he is in that family tree. Yeah, you know, like Dre found him, I think, yeah. and shit. So like I get it. Um, or Fifty found him. One of them. Yeah, it was, yeah. He was. Yeah, it was part um, of that. He was part of that whole. So thing. I do kind of understand that portion, but I don't know if he's on their level, obviously. 
He's like, like you're right there, though. You're like, Kendrick yeah. and fun. You know what I mean? Those Kendrick guys are yeah. going down forever. So getting back to our story here. Manti. Um, did this need to... Because second, the second episode is really very much about how Deadspin got to the bottom of the story ahead of everybody else. Yeah. Um, did it need to be two episodes and that long? No. I, I probably need to be an hour. What's the first? Each one's about an hour 15. Yeah. Some of them are pr- around there, yeah. Yeah, probably need to be an hour 40, hour 30. Yeah. One. I feel like you could prop. I, I think. I think what makes this one complicated is the is the transgender uh, yeah. story, and like that is important to a lot of people right now. That that topic and like talking about that stuff. So I think that extra half hour focus kind of on like that story is that what made sense. this one two episodes. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think that that's true. I don't feel like I learned a hell of a lot about that about the motivations behind that. I mean, I, I think they tried. I think they tried, but, but I think that's, yeah. But I don't think you really got into that person's head as to why they thought it was necessary to do what they did. Other Untolds aren't two episodes, right? Some are one. Uh, I think they're this, mostly all one. I think yeah. they're mostly all Cause, one. Because I was yeah. going to say, well, maybe it's a contractual weirdness, you know, like why do no, two? I, but, think um, that, I think that they just felt like they had too much for yeah. one. And if when you're watching it on Netflix, it's almost seamless anyway. It just yeah, bumps yeah. into the next one, so... But it, it seemed a little longer than it really needed to be. And um, one of the quotes somewhere in the second episode was that um, there was no interest in trying to understand the whole story if, on the basis of like the media and, yeah. and, and the no. rest of the world. And I they think just that want that, clicks and crazy. I think that yeah. that's true, and I think it's still true. Yeah. No, yeah, what do that they That hasn't care? changed at all. No, that why do they care? They don't care about Manti Teo. They yeah. care about the story. They don't they're, care that they've cost this guy millions of dollars. No, or, or shame or anything. They but don't give a fuck. They want clicks. Do you guys do you guys think that this whole controversy is why he fell in the draft? Alleg- uh, allegedly fell well, in the yeah. draft. Yeah, I think it comes down to the that um the championship game where he took a shit in the middle of the field pretty much yeah, yeah I, I bet you it's the controversy just based on like knowing a little bit about the business just because like any reputation stuff does carry with you and they're trying to sell jerseys yeah they're trying to win games so like even from a winning game point they're like maybe they they look into things like is he gullible is he mm-hmm. naive is he these things and then any like negative press if you're trying to make like a professional team they don't always believe that all press is good press because it is true. Like you're not going to sell more jerseys if you have like negative press. So uh, probably, probably, yeah. and, and maybe there was some like I, I watched a lot of football in that era, but I didn't like analyze it. Like maybe there was some pure football things too that he was, and they talked about that a little bit. Maybe being um, inflated with this skill as well, right? Like linebackers going for the, the Heisman, you know, and all this stuff. And Notre Dame is he just showing out? Um, so maybe there was like legitimate football stuff uh, that came out white drop because it wasn't that Alabama game wasn't even fucking close. They got absolutely blown out, forty two fourteen. Yeah, I don't think there was anything he could have even done if he no, had his no, best no, game no. to stop that. No, of course not. Like football is such a team game, um, so there's a lot of factors. But but also like back to like you know it seems like his career kind of played off around like a second round draft pick players. Right, would, he played ten play. years in the league. So it almost feels like no he went where he kind of probably deserved to go, and probably. he was maybe over clearly overhyped. Probably because it, it, the Notre Dame story. You know, there's a lot of fans. They they yeah. they, they, they hadn't been smashing heads in about twenty years. You know, Rudy, there's a lot of little Rudy. stuff. I think they were. I think that they know the best, not the media, and yeah. not, not people. But, right, and also the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, his mindset, his mental uh, state of like performance anxiety. Mm-hmm. Right, he was having panic attacks on the field right. as a pro. That's not a good sign. No, I'm no. sure. And in the draft, they do like such a psychoanalysis and in interviews and shit. They might have caught. They probably something. shit the bet on that. Yeah, they, because he, like he, he was could've. literally having panic attacks every game. Yeah, and like that's not what's what you the, want. What's the test you take? Me and Kyle did it one day, fucking around. I cannot remember what it's called. But it's basically like a sports IQ ish type test, you know. And, and and who knows? Like if he's having performance anxiety, that's a timed thing. You're taking like basically a sports problem solving SAT. You know what I mean? It basically is an SAT. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, maybe he flunked that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this seems like a good possibility. And I think it just because the story is so fucking inscrutable, you can't figure out where you need to 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 land on in your understanding yeah. of what actually happened and I, big sports don't like ambiguity they they want you either to be a hero or a sellable villain and they don't really want you to have anything else going on in your life yeah this was like actual drama not sellable villain shit yeah right. it's not dennis rodman no yeah no 
No, yeah, you're right. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. I agree. Yeah, because yeah, some drama is fine. You know, to be the the, the the slight villain. You're but, the bad boy. Yeah, but this like, is he gets a little rough around the edges. This is just especially for that era. This, this was is just, just honest, mud. This was honestly just funny. Yeah, it is wild. Like sadly, it was kind of funny. Like yeah, I feel I bad for him. But like, dude, like you're believing this crazy story that like she like faked her death. And then he came, well, back, came back to life with a call. Say you do know and her. And you go to the ocean to think about it. Like, was this a book? Say you do know her, right? And you're dating her in person, hypothetically. But then they fake their death on you, and then it's because they had to run. You're breaking up, right? But also, like, well, why yeah. is this like, random like, like, innocent so, girl on the run? Who that's from what, who? That's what I'm saying, though. So take the catfish out, and you're really dating this chick, and you're 19, 20, and you're going to the NFL. You know you're going to the NFL. You're breaking up. <laughs> like no way am I taking this baggage with me. No. There's no fucking you, what. Why are you lying to me? Why are you faking your death? Who the fuck mafia uh, uh, are you running from? What are we doing? This is not going to work no longer. I think also that uh, that none of us has af- actually ever been in love with a super fucked up person. Well, <laughs> so so <laughs> <laughs> I got a pass. I got. I just. I just don't, dude. I just don't. I just don't get it. How you can get to that spot? Yeah. I don't personally get it. I don't Young age. I can understand like meeting somebody online. Yeah. And especially nowadays. I totally yeah. understand having a long distance relationship, maybe with someone you haven't met before online. Obviously we're gonna need to see some like FaceTimes and communicate mm-hmm. and do shit like that. Totally see that. Yeah. You know, no though it wasn't an option back then as much yeah. or whatever, but like the whole stories of these like elaborate stories of the you know, the play calling and the fucking That stuff's so actually more hilarious the more we talk so about funny. it. <laughs> Just calling the audibles play calling. From, from fucking Hawaii. And the uh, <laughs> And the uh, the death, and then coming back alive, the breathing, him just listening to her breathing on the phone for hours on end, <laughs> just like, <laughs> what is going on? Dude, the down? wet dreams, that, and the wet dreams need fuel. I think he was wet. I think he would fall asleep to the breathing. No, for sure, for wet dreams. Yeah, you need fuel. You need one for the spank. Bank. Tackling fuel. Tackling fuel. <laughs> He's spank bank, dude. I think you just have to be. I keep coming back to gullible because that's really where it is for me. That you would believe that shit, and then. And then, like in an, in a car accident, on a ventilator, and then diagnosed with leukemia. I mean, that's a hat on a hat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. No, that's a lot. Dude, leukemia, car accident, <sighs> fake death, come back alive. I'm on the run from the mob, and you're just like, okay, okay, <laughs> we're gonna babe. get this through, through we're this gonna together. Get through this with with God is gonna get us through this. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. God put her in my life because she needs my help. Yeah, maybe. That's where that goes. Well, I I've mean, seen it. if he made his whole college decision based on that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's that that's like the the mo- the first moment in the whole thing for me where I thought, "Ah." But really? since when do Mormons and Catholics have this like connection where like I'm going to go to this I'm a Mormon, I'm going to go to this super traditional yeah. like Catholic old school Catholic school and God's going to like like is that how those mesh? I have yeah, no idea. Yeah, cuz we had Rudy and BYU didn't. <laughs> that's your only other option. Yeah, that's your I guess only option. That's what it comes down to. I just, dude, man, that story, man. If I just don't, I feel bad for him, and then I think about the story, and I'm like, you know what, man? I just, you know, <laughs> lessons what? learned. I can't. You know with what? That. Yeah. You know what? It's okay. Lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. Okay, I think we've come to the point in uh, the show where we need to give a uh, a rating for yeah. this uh, documentary mini series, two episodes. And I like to come up with some some new way to some new uh, stand in for for stars or thumbs or whatever every time. And this time I think it's going to be voicemails. All right, five five really good voicemails. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a three point seven as a film, not as a story. The story's wild, but I, I thought it was a pretty good documentary. If you like documentaries, I got a three point seven voicemails out of five. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a good four and a half because the mm. story was so insane. It's wild, and I only knew the surface level story of it. I only knew back in the day when I remember hearing about it. I thought, and I never looked into it. Yeah, I didn't know they didn't were trans. Really care. I didn't know any of that. I was just more like, oh, this dude got caught up getting catfished or in this fake relationship it wasn't a big deal. And then you get to know the real story and yeah. like the like the death thing and the leukemia and the car accident yeah, I didn't know that and either. the grandma on the same day and the. You're just like it doesn't doesn't get better. Yeah, it just keeps going. It does going. seem like a. I was thoroughly movie. entertained. Like <laughs> I was thoroughly entertained. They should have made a movie. 
They could have instead of a documentary. I would I would agree with you on that. They probably yeah. will in like ten years. I'm gonna go four and a half on the entertainment value, and then a <laughs> solid like like where you're at with the story. Yeah, the un- story could have been like cut short, and it could have yeah. been like less focused on things that didn't make sense to the story. But but these untolds are really good. Untolds yeah. are solid, and then, and then this story is wild. So it is a really good documentary. So uh, I think the execution, you know, I think it's a, a five voicemail execution. <laughs> I think it's a three voicemail um um story it, so you're I like, like a these kind of stories though so yeah and, and and um did i need to know any of this stuff no. i think that that's like a zero voicemail yeah. situation zero. yeah at dead zero i didn't need to know and and doesn't it make it worse to bring it up again this way i mean the I mean, poor interview he still looks so sad it. he looks so sad in the interviews poor guy yeah he still like looks broken like and i don't think we didn't make him feel any better i'm i'm fully down with anything that's going to make this guy feel better i think this and documentary might maybe because i think that it does bring about like a little more understanding and the more you understand the more you can hopefully empathize with other humans where like i think the the internet in 2010 just called him a fucking idiot and you know like you fucking loser like I think he just got and they, rammed. They felt like they got defrauded, but they didn't give anything but their attention. It's yeah. not like there was a big GoFundMe to cheer, cheer him up when, yeah. when this, you know, happened or yeah, anything like that. He, he, no, there was no, yeah, that's true. Like it wasn't like a big impact on this. He made it to the league. Yeah, yeah. The only he got just to the league, played there for a bunch of years. He probably got over it and was like, "Man, that was crazy." Pro- yeah, probably emotionally, probably rattled him. And then, you know, if if what we're we're you know stamping now that he is truly religious and believes and stuff, you know, maybe there's always anything bad that happens to you. Um, you're always going to say a little bit of you know victim stuff, like why me, mm-hmm. like what's going on. So maybe maybe he had some you know extra demons to look into with his. Well, beliefs. he did kind of blame the whole thing on his performance anxiety on yeah. the field, right? He yeah. kind of like tied those together like i didn't have these problems on the field yeah. before all this yeah i mean trauma is trauma and obviously getting shot at at war is different but ptsd can happen from anything like yeah. you can literally yeah. stub your toe and get ptsd somehow i'm sure you know so you know that's where i guess i i empathize where he got to tell his side of the story i guess that's the biggest thing of the documentary where before it's just the internet bashing some meathead football player yeah and that's true but there was still a lot of wiggle room in the, in in the way he presented his story like you can you know, you can assume negative things out of the story for sure that he that he, that well, he told. Yeah, but that's I, human. I mean, I I genuinely feel badly for him, regardless of whatever, because he didn't deserve the kind of treatment that he got out well, of from it from the media. Especially, from the media, right? like yeah. they're trying and, to out him on national TV. Right, yeah. like that's frowned upon. Right, yeah. like you're just like forcing him to say shit. Like trying to get a story, it right. was just kind of gross yeah. watching the media's treatment of yeah, it. Yeah, right? it was. I mean, maybe the the real lesson of the whole thing is how fucked up the media yeah. is. Yeah, and because they they it was none of their business. It was entirely none of their business. Clicks. Yep. Clicks. Yeah. Uh, plug away, Dean. Where can people find you? Oh, you know, if you want any coffee or any like you know workout clothes, hit up caffeineandkilos.com dot com or you know three SB. You know, they got some good stuff too. <laughs> so you get a little fit. You might not get some coffee there, but you can get some some cool clothes. You get a little caffeine and kilos coffee in a top. You grab some of our shorts and you just fucking ride out. Yeah, you just ride out, ladies and right gentlemen. Right out in the sunset. Thanks for listening. New episode every Wednesday, Friday. We'll be at Kevin and Kilo's Invitational. We have our own meet September 11th. If you want to come uh, roll through Third Street, um, spectators are allowed. We'll be kicking it, selling clothes, and hanging out. Um, other than that. I'm selling Mike everywhere you want to find me. Commit to the fit. Has anybody said that? I'm sure someone did. I'm sure. Like, uh, what, what's the dress one? <laughs> is there like a wedding dress saying like that? Oh, oh yeah, it is. Uh, I say yes to the dress. Yes, yes to the, to the dress. dress. Commit yeah. to the fit. Yeah. That's what our new yeah. name's going to be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm at DJ McDaniel on social media. This show, 50% facts, where percent is a word, and 50 is just numbers. 50% facts is a Spreaker Prime podcast in association with iHeartMedia on the... Obscure Celebrity Network. And we'll talk to you Friday.